Um, Peg comes forward. I just want to tell you that in 14 years, I have never made a personal comment about any laureate. And I want to tell you tonight that Science World celebrated its 30th birthday this week. And yes, I'm known as the founder or co-founder, but there would be no Science Center without Haig. He gave up two years of his life to put everything into it. And uh, I want to pay tribute to that because he did not mention it in the video and he did not mention it in his CV. And it is one of the most critical things he did for the province and for myself. I kind of feel like the, the widow who's looking at the, at the funeral service and the preacher is up there extolling the virtues of the deceased. And the widow says to the eldest son, dear, look in, in, the, fun in the coffin and make sure it's your father they're talking about. <laughs> So I'm going to stray a little bit. Um, the world is all about networks, and there's a huge network here. But there's a man in the audience here called Mo Kermani, who's one of the leading experts in the world on speakers. So the recycled sound people should track down Mo at the end of this evening. <laughs> He's a PhD in physics, and he knows all about flat panel speakers and any kind of sound, so they can, he can probably mentor you and help you grow your business. <laughs> so. so, Barbara, um, I was just thinking that, you know, if there were a uh, volunteer, a volunteer Hall of Fame, Barbara would be the first inductee. In 1968, I left the cozy world of practicing law at Ferris & Company <clears throat> to start a new financially oriented business with Mike Brown and Jack Jefferson. My mother was not pleased. From then until she passed away in 2004, she kept saying, dear, when are you going to get a job? <laughs> I'm still looking, mother. I'd like to thank JABC for this recognition because it is particularly meaningful for me as the motivation of this organization is similar to my own, which is to finance and inspire the next generation of technological entrepreneurs. I have a few thank yous to make. Mary, for decades of patience and support. <clears throat> my longtime friend and partner, Mike Brown, And all my students from UBC, entrepreneurship course in particular, Ali Tarani, Jordi Rose, Ajay Agrawal, Mo Kermani, Eldad Haber, and Misha Yachkov, for inspiring me to peek over the technological horizon of innovation and to help young entrepreneurs create companies that will change the world. I'd also like to thank my pals Chen Fong and Jim Dawson because for every time we meet, we all say another 10 years of deals and startups. And finally, Ken Spencer, Noel Hall, and Lori Wallace, who have helped turn a few of my possible tech flameouts to successful companies and investments. <laughs> my remaining comments tonight are directed to the junior achievers who are here tonight, and for in truth, this is their evening. The mission of the Junior Achievement Organization is as follows. We are empowering young people to own their own economic success. I start with a quote from a crazy inventor that Mike Brown and I once backed. If you can imagine it, it can be built or done. That was the view of a crazy inventor Mike Brown and I financed called Russ Bratowski. He invented a rear projection screen that worked in daylight. We got it built and done and demonstrated the world's first instant replay at a BC Lions football game in the mid-1980s. Sadly, we lost all our money. <laughs> Some things to think about. 
and this is for the junior achievers. It is not worth spending your university years and your family savings and your student loans just to get a training for your first job. You want to study things that will last you a lifetime, including history and literature, and get an advanced degree in something. Most new tech startups today are created by those, created by those with PhDs who truly understand the technology they are developing. And all they need is business advice and leadership to make their dreams come true. Learn as much math and physics as you can, because future innovation and job security will be defined by those having expertise in those disciplines. I was very happy to see the young people tonight talk about the importance of STEM uh, for women entrepreneurs, because there are many in Vancouver, and there's going to be a lot more. Pursue the ideas of the experts of the day that, who say it won't work. Henry Ford stated that if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. <laughs> King Wuling in 307 BC said a talent for following the ways of yesterday is not sufficient to improve the world of today. Understand that there are two kinds of people in this world, those who see problems and those who see solutions. Both are needed, but the solvers are the ones that change the world. Understand as well that there is no such thing as an overfinanced startup, except, except perhaps Uber. <laughs> and finally, remember the number one rule of developing a successful startup. Never give up, and friend or foe, get that dough. <laughs> Thank you.